Hello everyone. So we've covered a lot of ground uh, and we, in talking about language models, we've got this nice uh, idea that we're going to actually construct a model of a document and we've actually got a model of the query, um, although our model of the query is very simple at the moment, a maximum likelihood estimated model. And what, but what we end up doing is we end up saying, well, let's do query likelihood. And so let's take our document model and see to what extent would it be likely that it would have been able, would have generated that query. Um, now we talked about the zero probability problem and yeah, got documents. They might not have a word in them that's in the query. And as such, then they would have zero probability and zero probability of ever producing that uh, query if we use a maximum likelihood estimated model of the document. So we introduced smoothing to better estimate the probabilities of documents. Um, now we're going to move on to sort of looking at the query side of things and some of the problems we see there. And can we do something to sort of improve retrieval quality um, at this uh, level, what, what the user's query is. Um, and so this problem sort of is stated as follows. Basically that, you know, we get these really short queries from users in general. Uh, if users would give us a long statement, maybe even an entire document of like, I'm looking for stuff like this, then we're able to actually build a really good sense of what they're looking for and do these comparisons between the document and the query. But we might only have something like shark attacks. So sure, that's probably gonna get us pretty far, but it would be a lot more helpful, you know, if we knew, you. oh, you care about shark attacks on beaches, or maybe you care about shark attacks Australia, uh, so forth and so on. Like, any more details that the uh, person could provide, the better we would be able to help them find the information they're looking for. Uh, in particular, as well, look, these short queries. We know we have a vocabulary mismatch problem. You know, we try to resolve that with things like stemming. Um, but, you know, let's say we're dealing with, uh, again, the example I really like is gasoline versus petrol. You know, so if you just do uh, uh, sort of something with like petrol efficiency or something, you know, for cars, well, there's going to be a lot of documents that you might miss out on that are talking about gasoline and efficiency and how, how good it could be. And as well, oh, you're looking for it with cars, you know? So uh, if all you had was petrol efficiency versus gasoline efficiency though, you know, you're not gonna find other stuff if you specify petrol efficiency, you're not gonna find the gasoline efficiency articles. But if you did petrol efficiency cars, you know, kilometers, uh, kilometers per liter, you know, miles per gallon, all sorts of things that you could put in uh, with regard to explaining why you're looking for petrol efficiency. All those other words could be really helpful and you might then actually go, wow, this document doesn't mention petrol, but it really does say a lot of that other stuff you're looking for because it's about gasoline efficiency of cars. Um, it might, you know, it's not going to be top ranked document, but it might get up high enough that you could actually find it. Whereas if you were a really short query, you're likely not to find it. And that's, we're going to run into this problem. Uh, so the more words uh, someone uses, the less likely we're going to run into the problem of, nope, I don't have, I, you're not using the word that the document's using, so I can't ever find that document for you. So let's tackle this problem. Let's, let's try to deal with these short queries. Um, so yeah, I, I'll, put it, I'll put it forth as sort of a question like this. Um, you know, we smoothed documents to better estimate their probabilities
because we said, you know, it just doesn't make sense to say it has zero probability. It would be better to give it some probability. And we chose those other probabilities based upon uh, the collection language model. So uh, we smooth diagonals to better, better estimate their probabilities. Uh, you know, shouldn't we smooth the queries? And let's think about that for a moment. So for documents, we said, well, let's try to get some, rather than just uniform probabilities for those extra words, uh, let's uh, distribute the probabilities with regard to the usage of English language. Now, if you do this for the query, though, that, that, that's not really what we're looking for, is it? to give some probabilities to all the words. What we're really trying to do is we're trying to add in, it's like the example I'm dealing with petrol and gasoline. I'd really like if I say petrol, that gasoline also has some appreciable amount of probability in my query model, uh, because that's also the type of word that I would be looking for. I would be describing my information need well. Um, so I'm not just trying to get rid of the zero probabilities. I'm trying to get words that are helpful. Kind of like if I was to ask someone to write more, what would they write? You know, what would they say? Can I, can I put in some of these additional words uh, in some fashion for this person to, to help their query uh, in, in an automatic fashion? All right. So, Let's take that idea, let's continue with it, and we'll kind of expand it to say, you know, uh, we can think of this problem. as similar. to if we had, you know, a small sample size problem in hand. And these show up in, uh, not problem, problem. Uh, these show up in other fields, okay? Um, and what I mean by this is a query, we can think of it as a sample from a model of relevant documents. So yeah, we only have petroleum efficiency or something, okay? So, um, but that came from our user's uh, model, so to speak, of what is relevant or in this case, as I'm saying, from a set of relevant documents. So we could have, if we knew what these relevant documents were in advance, from them we could build some sort of model. And yes, we might have, if we produce a two word query, the likely query might have been shark attacks because all the documents would talk about shark attacks. Or there might have been, a uh, two word query might have been uh, petroleum gasoline, you know, maybe if we, you know, we had all these documents, but if we get third word, maybe it'd be efficiency or something like that. Anyways, um, so if we had those, we could, but we can think of it as coming from a sample of those documents. All right. And so this then is all right. So we're back to what I've been saying, which is how can we better estimate model of relevant documents because that's what we're really trying to do um, is so we don't know the relevant documents are unknown to us so but we we're, we're like we've got this small sample what do we think the model of relevant documents are well when we take a maximum likelihood estimate of the query 
which is the default when we're doing query likelihood, basically. Um, that's our model of relevant documents. You know, if it was um, petrol efficiency, 50% petrol, 50% efficiency, that's not a very good model. So what could we estimate better for this model of what we're looking for, the relevant documents, um, from the query? So uh, given a small sample. And again, the point being is that maximum likelihood estimation is bad. You know, it's a, it's for, for estimating what the actual relevant model is or the model of the relevant documents, I would say the maximum likelihood estimate, you know, it's got all these zero probabilities, you know, we're just taking the words that we see in the proportions that we see them and we've got this tiny little sample. Well, like, couldn't we, couldn't we, like, I think the thing is, if you were a human and you had, with your knowledge of the world and the usage of language, from a lot of short queries, you could come up with a set of words probably uh, to sort of embellish and add to that query uh, for someone to maybe help them to produce a better model of what they were looking for. Now, you might not be certain, but you could probably come up with some stuff, all right? And that's what we want. So we want sort of an automated way of doing that, uh, all right? And what we're going to look at today is an approach to solve this problem. And the uh, approach that we're, that we're going to talk about is known as relevance models. And this work comes from uh, Victor Lebrenko. Uh, and uh, it's you can see the course textbook. The course textbook has a whole bit about it. I believe I already had it in the reading. If not, find that part. You should read the relevance model section there. All right. Um, so what are relevance models? Well, they are a technique, as I've been implying, not a technique, a technique for better estimating a query model. with the idea that it's going to be, we're trying to estimate what this, uh, um, oh, what the set of relevant documents is. What is this sort of the, what is the relevant model? You know, what's the rel what's a model of relevance? Can we better estimate it? Um, it comes from a family of techniques called, one of them is called pseudo relevance feedback. One of them is called blind feedback. It, by the way, these two are synonymous with each other. They're just different uh, names for each other. But then also uh, query expansion. Query expansion is related to these, but it's not exactly the same thing. All right, so what are we talking about when we're talking about relevance feedback or this blind feedback or pseudo relevance feedback? So we need to talk about relevance feedback. All right, so let's go talk about relevance feedback now. All right, so though it's going to be based upon relevance feedback. So what is relevance feedback? I'll just write relevance feedback. So relevance feedback works as follows. So it's a user interface method uh, for helping users find relevant documents. Uh, major web search engines don't have it anymore. Uh, once upon a time, a very simple form of it uh, was found on some search engines where you would click to find more documents like this document. Um, 
but the idea would be, so you as a user, you would submit your query. All right, then as you're viewing your results, um, in that list of results, you actually notice that some of them are relevant and some of them are not relevant. All right, and there's a interface feature that lets you mark, oh, this one's relevant. Oh, this one I don't like, it's not relevant, relevant and so forth and so on. Um, and once you've got a good set of them, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a big storm happening <laughs> outside right now. I don't know if this uh, mic picks it up or not. Anyway, um, all right. So the user views results and, su and submits feedback about which ones are relevant or not. So this is a user interface feature. So you first do your query, and as you go through, you're, oh, this is relevant, this is not relevant. And you're like, you submit it to the search engine so that it can try to learn what you really are looking for. Um, and think about what it's able to do now. You originally gave it a short query. You found some documents that are relevant and some that aren't. Well, now you've given it lots of text to, to learn from and to say, I have a much better idea of what relevant material should look like for you. Okay, and in fact, how to potentially discriminate between relevant and not relevant material. All right, so the system goes and it builds a new model of the query. And it's based on the feedback. And then the search engine returns a new ranked list. And you can look at it. And you can say, oh, these are relevant and these are not relevant. Um, these you know, systems, when they're built this way, are usually designed to, after you've told it about relevant or not relevant, it stores that information somewhere for you for later for review, but it doesn't stick those results in the result lists anymore because you already know about them. You wouldn't want to look, to, look at them again. All right. All right. So that's what relevance feedback is. And it's a, it's a, technique that absolutely can be really useful when you're trying to find more relevant material and especially when you're trying to find multiple documents um, of relevant material and so it, it's great but it does require the user to take the time and basically teach the search engine what is relevant and not relevant but with that information the search engine is able to do a good job okay and so look it's transformed the initial, this whole process transformed the initial query into a new model of the query that's going to be much richer and much more informed about what you're looking for. So what is, what are, that's what relevance feedback is. What's the pseudo and blind feedback? Um, well, Pseudo and blind feedback. Well, we don't ask the user for feedback. What we end up doing is we just simply assume the top results are relevant. So we put in the query. On the back end, we do a retrieval. We never show those results to the user. But we go and we do the retrieval and we go, ooh, I have the results. Let's just assume the top ones are relevant. Let's pretend the user tells me that they're relevant. And I will then go and build a model based on these and use it to generate the actual list that someone will see. So again, it works as follows. You put in a query. On the back end, the search engine does the retrieval, does not show those results to the user, takes the top ones and says, let's just assume the user said they were all relevant. It uses them plus the query to build a new model. 
and then does the retrieval with that and then shows that final list uh, to the user. The idea being is that, ah, oh, maybe this is a, maybe this will work. Maybe this is a good way, you know, maybe if we were sort of on the mark, so to speak, with uh, our initial results, we'll be even better once we, once we've expand, once we sort of model all these documents together. Um, all right. Pseudo obviously means it's fake feedback. There's no real feedback. Blind, the idea is it's like someone, is, you know, isn't actually looking and doing the feedback. Okay, so they're, they're two words for the same thing. Uh, what's query expansion? Well, query expansion, as you can kind of tell, I've, I almost say it, I keep wanting to say, when we add words to the query, well, you certainly could implement pseudo and blind feedback by basically looking at those top documents and picking great words from the top documents that you want to add to the query, and then you end up with this longer query and you run it. Um, but yeah, the idea of query expansion is to add... Um, similar or synonyms, not necessarily synonyms, but they could be similar in some way. Add similar or synonyms of words to the existing query and run that query for the user. So the user puts in the query and then you analyze the query and through some technique you say, I think we should add the following words to it. So you expand the query by just literally adding words and then you run that query for the user instead of the original short query. Uh, the pseudo and blind feedback methods, they might, you know, effectively add a bunch of words, but often one of the things that's important with these methods and what you're going to see with relevance model is how should we actually sort of weight the words? How much importance should we get add to, to the, the various words that we're adding to the query? Um, because we, we want it still to be about what the user is looking for. We want it to be a better query, but we don't want to like destroy the query or replace it and change it. Um, all right. So some one thing, a couple of things to note here, by the way. If the initial retrieval for your query is awful, so let's say it actually returns no relevant documents, is it likely to make it better? No, it's not likely to make it better. Okay, it probably can't make it better. Um, Likewise, um, I guess the other thing to think about this is, does it always work? The answer is going to be no, it's not always going to work, okay? Sometimes it can help a lot, but sometimes it could hurt. It might wash out the meaning that you had in your original query, and you might just you get sort of a generic set of results then, and that would be bad because we still want to be focused on what you're looking for. So it's a it's a tricky thing. Um, but relevance models um, has been shown to to work quite effectively, especially in the circumstances where someone is looking to find additional relevant documents. They're really trying to increase the recall of their query. So this whole thing tends to, tends to be a recall enhancing technique and not a precision enhancing technique. Um, all right, so let's dig in now in detail about relevance models. All right, so again, this idea is that we've got some sort of model of the actual relevant documents. And from them, we have some sample of the query. And by the way, the idea also is that like this relevance model is actually perhaps some model in the user's mind and or someone's mind and they would have written the relevant documents somehow using those and from that came the relevant documents as well 
And so we should be able to work back to from the query there. But it's the idea that they, these have been sampled from this model. Now, under our notions of how we're modeling, we're going to model things as a multinomial language model. And let's go about uh, figuring this out. OK, so uh, we just have to put some things on the board. So we're going to let m sub r be the relevance model. All right. And we can compute it as follows. So the probability of a word given the relevant model, so the model of relevance, is equal to the summation over D. This is over all the documents in our collection. And we take the probability of the document given the query. So this is document likelihood multiplied by the probability of the word given the document. All right. So what is this basically telling us here? Well, the relevance model is a weighted average of all documents in the collection where each document is weighted by its probability given the query. All right, to see this, so again, what we're doing here, so this is for, we're building up this model here. So this is the parameter that we're looking for. We're going to do this per parameter. So for each word, basically, but for this word in this model, we're going to go over all the documents and find out what all of their probabilities are for those words. And so these are the, you know, simply put, you can take the maximum likelihood estimated model of those documents. All right. So you've got all of these, and what's the probability of the word in that document? Now, if we just mix them all equally, that would just be basically the collection model. But so what we really want to do here is we want to weight each document in this weighted average by its probability given the query. Okay, so how likely are we to see this document given the, the query that we have? All right, now, We've already talked about some of the issues with um, document likelihood. So what we do is we go from that idea and we do some manipulations. And I'm not going to show you uh, these by some manipulations. But I will post uh, in Learn. Uh, these are equations. 16 and 17 in what I'll call the Dermix paper. This is a, a technical report I wrote a long time ago, and it shows the how to go through some of the steps to get some of these. And you can take a look at it if you want, to, if you want to understand the derivation of it. Um, by some manipulations, we can get to this form of it probability of the word model realm document. So this is a much more useful uh, version that we could actually use. What we're going to do is have a summation over the top K documents. And this is often a small number, you know, 20 to 50, uh, or even 10 or something like that. 
Um, and these are the documents, when we say the top K documents, these are the top K documents from our actual retrieval, from a query likelihood retrieval. And so we go to the probability of D sub I over Q, given Q, probability of the word, given D sub I. So, okay, this looks almost exactly like what we had before, except that instead of overall documents, now we're down to thankfully only having to do it for, let's say, 50 documents. But we haven't changed this math, except what you're going to see now is where we're actually going to tell you how we're going to compute the probability of the document i given the query. And it's going to be the probability of the query given document i divided by the sum over those top k documents of the query likelihood normalized by the sums of the query likelihoods for those top k documents. So basically, this is what's neat. So again, this is just a point to make sure you know this. This is query likelihood. Yeah, this as well. All right. So basically now what we see what we do is we take the user's initial query. Okay. Uh, we run it doing regular language modeling retrieval with query likelihood. On, we never show those results to the user. On the back end, we get them. And so now we know, but we've got a score, a query likelihood next to each document in that rank list. Okay, so that's what each of these are. That's what one of these is. And we go, it's basically, ah, we're going to weight things by their query likelihoods, you know, normalized over the set of the top K documents that we did. All right, so this is how we make our weighted average of documents. So we're just going to be taking the top documents, but rather than weighting them equally, we're going to give them a weight proportional to their retrieval score, where their retrieval score is the query likelihood. Okay. And this works really, really well. Um, in many cases, after computing this model, we'll go and we'll, this would be a very large model with a huge number of words that have non-zero probabilities in them now. What we'll usually do is we'll truncate this model to let's say, again, the, the top uh, 20 words or something, or the top 50 words or something like that. And with that truncated model, then we'll run it as the query. We'll do retrieval, we'll score things using cross entropy or uh, KL divergence, and then we'll finally show that rank list to the user. Okay. All right, let me walk you through that because you might not have all gotten that with the words that I'm saying. So what does that math mean? Thus, it means do a query likelihood retrieval and then we're going to linearly combine the top K documents. This is their models, by the way, where we weight them proportional to their retrieval scores. Okay, then we use this model of relevant documents. And again, we often 
we'll truncate to the top terms, 10 to 25. So this would be the most frequently occurring, the words with the highest probability. Uh, and we use this model to retrieve docs, and then we show to the user. Okay, so how do you do that sort of retrieval? Again, um, go back, I had it before, we use cross entropy as the ranker, or we use KL divergence as the ranker. Okay, um, again, these are methods for when we have a, a language model for the query that's not just we're gonna do query likelihood, um, how can we actually compare the language model that we have for the query against all the document language models? And the, these are the ranking methods that we have in language modeling. Now, this works well, but it can be made to work even better if we retain some notion of the original query. All right. So we can improve retrieval quality by retaining some weight of the original query. And I'll just say that this, if you go back in time for uh, information retrieval research, the early, the work on relevance feedback uh, with Rokio always had this notion. Um, when it came to relevance models, James Allen said, you guys, this should be done. We should have some notion of retaining the query. Uh, it was done, all right. Um, and it has become called RM3 for the third version of relevance models. There was an RM1 and an RM2, and RM3 is this one. So you do uh, all of that, as I've said, but then you retain some of the original query and you mix it back in. And so our actual model then for our query becomes a mixture between the maximum likelihood estimated model of our query and the computed relevance model. Okay, so we can linearly combine those and we end up with this new model of the query and this is the one that we actually run and it works better than just running just the relevance model in almost all cases. Okay, um, great. So one of the things that's fascinating to me about this, so uh, James Allen said this should be done. Uh, group of students, uh, Fernando Diaz, uh, myself and other people working on Trek that summer. I believe Fernando was the first to write the code and do it and stuff. Uh, actually implemented uh, RM3, and it's in the Trek submission. I think we had it was 2014 or something. Um, it was later. Uh, I did this work, so you've got this technical report on Dirichlet mixtures that I'll upload to learn. And in, uh, in it, what's interesting is is we can actually. I find it fascinating is that it can be shown, and I show it in that paper. that relevance models, in particular RM3, are a special case of what are known as Dirichlet mixtures. And Dirichlet mixtures are or at least back many years ago, were used heavily in bioinformatics.
and they're used there for the same problem. We've got a small sample of something and we want to better estimate it. And so they take models of uh, other genetic material um, and then we're better able to estimate what really that sample should be estimated as when, we, when they then use it in other models for various bioinformatics purposes. Very similar to what's going on here uh, as done in language modeling. The same sort of issues, the same sort of solution. It's fascinating. It's from both, both angles. Uh, people are doing the same sort of uh, technique. Um, and so really, when we look at relevance models, and when we've done this, where we've mixed in the query, lo and behold, uh, it turns out it actually has its, its solid root in uh, Dirichlet mixtures. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, it's in Dirichlet mixtures. And you're like, that's great. What does that mean? Well, we talked, and I said, talked about the smoothing at the very beginning of uh, this language modeling thing, that we can kind of think about smoothing. Uh, one possibility is to talk about, we've got this big urn filled with dyes. So a bunch of multinomials in an urn. And a Dirichlet mixture is basically a composition of those models. And you could imagine some urns uh, filled with, you know, dye with a certain nature to them and another urn filled with other sorts of natures, uh, dyes in them. And so a Dirichlet mixture, the idea is, oh yeah, from each of these collections of urns, how would we model language and stuff? What would we actually say about that? Um, or well, how would we model the multinomials? I mean, but we're using multinomials to model the uh, language. And so what's interesting is, is that since RM3 is a variant of Dirichlet mixtures, then we can look and we can look at Dirichlet mixtures and kind of see a general picture of what is being done with uh, uh, smoothing here. Uh, or let me say with, with the estimation of the query. So the spirit of Dirichlet mixtures is as follows. And then this can kind of give us some insight as to the general notion of what we're doing when we try to better estimate a query, a short sample of text like that. So you can take a probability of the word given a model of the text. So we're trying to find a nice model of text. So rather than call us the model of the query, we're just gonna generically say we have a model of the text. So given a piece of text off and it's some sample and we'd like to better estimate it, we can do the following. The idea is we're gonna have a mixture between what was the original sample. Okay, so again, this is the maximum likelihood estimated model from the original sample, that piece of text. And we're going to linearly combine it with a weighted uh, mixture of models. Kind of looks like I'm writing MIT, but I'm not. Um, Actually, let me take this to a new line so that we can actually see it. All right, so we've basically rewritten what we've seen, but the idea is we're gonna make a new model of our text by mixing the old model of it with, and I completely missed out on the summation. All right, so what we're doing here is we're going over the, the space of the models that we care about, okay? So it's a mixture. We're basically saying we're going to take the original, we're going to linearly combine it with a weighted uh, average of other models that we have in hand, where we weight them by the probability of them given our original piece of text. Great, all right. So, uh, and now 
lambda is ends up being again how much to discount our original sample all right m is our set of models that we have so for example in bioinformatics they uh, you know, they might have six primary models or something like that. We, when we're doing it in RM3, our set of models is our entire collection. We model at the level of these, all these documents. Um, what kind of is interesting then is that tells us, well, maybe we could play around with, besides how much to, to mix, but we could play around with where do we get our models from? Should we be getting them from just the documents? Should we be doing something with passages? Should we be doing uh, something with documents, passages, and maybe higher level cluster models or something? You know, something that's a combination of topics or something like that. What are the things that we should be doing? Uh, but maybe there's something to be gained from experimenting with this instead of just using documents. Although just using documents is highly convenient and makes a lot of sense. And then also, When we've got this, well, how do we wait? Um, let's look at what we define to be our notion of how to weight each model given the sample of text. All right, so there's lots of ways that we could come up with doing it. It doesn't have to be this whole query likelihood thing. We could even, for example, and I think this has been done uh, by uh, Jimmy Lin, is basically, oh, well, we'll take the BM25 scores and we'll use the BM25 scores as a way to weight the models of the top K documents. So sort of a variant. You know, we're not going to stick to the strong theory of relevance models and language modeling. We're just going to say we we need some way to choose good weights. And, oh, the BM25 scores seem to be a really good way to weight things. You know, so um, this gives us an overall framework, uh, the way to understand and to think about uh, coming up with these new uh, relevance models. Or whenever we want to better estimate what we think of is as uh, a short piece of text and we want to basically fill in the gaps well take the original mix it with a bunch of weighted other models where these models make sense and you have some sensible way of weighting them and that's basically that tells us this whole story of basically a better way to estimate our queries to try to improve our retrieval performance um, Again, it doesn't always work, and it tends to be a recall enhancing and not a precision enhancing technique. Um, but uh, it, makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense uh, in many regards. All right.